first we have Roland. Um, he's going to talk about routing, but for more than just prams. <laughs> so Roland, over to you. Thank you everybody for coming to this talk. I'll talk about routing for various groups of pedestrians. Now, not so more any much to, to talk about routing for plants, pushing them and around and see whether where they got stuck. But it's also about uh, also about wheelchairs and about um, I think the British word uh, word is walking frame. I'm not sure what the American word is for this. And um, so to enable routing for various groups of pedestrians, um, let's say diverse groups of pedestrians. The background is. Um, we have near the city where I live, it's another big city called Dortmund. They have a local Meta, Me, Mepa meetup. And in 2019, the local council had uh, planned a large event, um, the Kirchentag 2019, which um, was intended and also got uh, 100,000 participants. And this is a very socially inclusive thing because it's, it's organized by a church. and. Um, so they expected all the dis, uh, disabled people and they approached OSM, the, the local MEPA meetup. Well, could you support us such that we get um, routing for disabled pedestrians in, in a good enough quality that we could put it into the uh, trip planner for public transport? That was basically the idea of the city council. You weren't that good for the reasons I will tell you afterwards. But basically, that gave the motivation to get um, routing for pedestrians really running, including groups of vulnerable pedestrians. So um, in addition of this, in the European Union, there is an obligation for public transit operators. I think it's probably uh, similar in the US. It just uh, permeated through some of the talks during the conference. There is a regulation that you have to be at least to give um, um, to, to, to plan trips for um, very free um, traveling. The uh, law only requires this from the stop to the stop, but obviously you don't live on the stop. So uh, the aspiration is to get it door to door instead of just stop to stop. So um, there is an intent to get a permanent solution for this and uh, not start uh, one time uh, done for the uh, Kirchentag. So we have to look what the state of the art for the uh, mapping. There's a lot of related work about pedestrian uh, routing. And the problem is if you go through it, it's quite good quality. What you don't find is a suitable tagging scheme such as you could in reasonable time and not in 30 years, but in reasonably time uh, collect enough information um, to really do pedestrian routing. And I'll explain where it's lacking. You could imagine that the simplest way is just that you could um, have a tech wheelchair, yes, no limited. It's what we have on points of interest right now, but it's not solving problems because um, you don't know even where the sidewalks are. I've just um, collected a couple of examples. Here it's just a classic case. Uh, it's a residential road and unless it's teched, you don't know whether there's a sidewalk on both sides or only on one side. Here it's not even clear whether there's a sidewalk at all. And then if you walk with open eyes to the city, you find things like this. The sidewalk suddenly ends. And this one where the city council, it's not Dortmund, the city, it's, in, it's Cologne in fact, the city council decided that the, the, the roots of the tree are more important than having a continuous sidewalk. So um, this happens quite frequently. So in the end, about 10 to 30 percent of all highway residentials on the ground after surveying hundreds of kilometers of streets in um, somewhere between Dortmund and Cologne in the metropolitan area do not have sidewalks on both sides. So one assumption I had in the beginning and probably many beginners would have is that you would just could assume that a highway residential unless otherwise tagged has sidewalks on both sides and it's safe to, to send a pedestrian on either side. But in fact, if there are 10 to 30%, you could not just say it's some residual cases. You should and must assume that you cannot route a pedestrian if you don't know the status of the sidewalk. There's, so the question is how to, how to map this. 
there are two approaches. Um, one is to have separate ways. This is this one. The other is to have only tags on a street. The great thing of the separate ways is that you have, um, without mind bending, a way to to put information like the width, the incline, or the uh, the surface of the um, of the sidewalk into the uh, into the line that represents the sidewalk. But um, the problem is it takes quite a lot of time to get the geometries and to get the geometries right. That's really time consuming. So the other model is much faster. It's uh, it's a thing you simply shouldn't do to try to add too much detail because you've got horrible, horribly complex text and you really uh, put it away into confetti for you have seen how much barriers are there in fact. So um, you shouldn't do this for, for too much details. But then we had 1,600 kilometers. We had 10 volunteers who were willing to map. So it was just no option to, to go with the, uh, with the fine and slow way. So we decided to use the coarse and fast way for most of the city. So um, a reasonable question is whether you could, if you um, get this, uh, uh, this course and fast way, if you really could re reconstruct uh, usable pedestrian geometry, we have just uh, proven wrong the assumption that you could just assume there are sidewalks. You should also cost check whether it's possible to, to get the geometry right. And if you have been in the talk um, one or two before this about the, um, Street Explorer, you have seen it is a difficult problem. So uh, my intent is after looking at it, I expect if you do it properly, you will end up with a handbook of instructions of about 30 to 100 pages, what to do. For example, how to manage level crossings, what should happen if there's a building that's very close to the center line, what does it tell us? I don't know all the edge cases far so far. I've just started to collect edge cases and I'm willing to set up a blog on this. It should have been ready for now, but uh, I'm sorry, it will take a week or so uh, to get the first uh, sequence of that blog online. The idea is um, I present my thoughts, what you have to take into account to get the sidewalks on the proper places. And I hope this is most of the time by examining uh, in a somewhat, but not completely systematic way, examples that are in the real world. And the hope is that you would, uh, if you read, um, you would be bold, chime in, present other examples that are relevant, such that in the end, we will have a handbook where you have, uh, okay, you should do this if there's a building close nearby, you should do this if there are the land use coming in, you should do this if you find um, a fence, if there is a barrier, and you should, you should do this, why? Because this is the example, this is the other example. And, so the hope is to collaboratively have in the end a handbook that uh, such that you could, if people ask how to do, how do we actually get the geometry, and the people to, if you are serious about getting it right, then look into the handbook and you then will get a comprehensive list of what can go wrong and what you should take into account to get the sidewalks in the, in the right place. It's also about uh, resolving uh, the geometry riddles. Um, if you, um, because the center lines are not a good estimation of where the actual the edges of the street are and when it comes to crossings. But that's only part of the problem. The real problem is uh, to treat all the um, objects along the street that in fact interact with the sidewalks, but that they have no connection to the center line. So a related problem, if you want really to do routing is, uh, okay, now we have the sidewalks, but we need to cross streets. And then it turns out if you have a pram, you, you suddenly recognize how much raised curbs there are, even unpaired ones, a lot. So the next step would be to find a quick way to get uh, the million crossings in Germany checked, whether they have raised or lowered curbs. And again, the problem is to find a cause and fast tagging. In fact, we did not arrive on a proper solution because there is a need for a tagging similar to the uh, sidewalk tag on the street where you could just clear a crossing. There are many crossings in uh, residential environment neighborhoods where actually all curbs are, uh, curbs are lowered or all curbs are raised because usually it's, it depends on the 
the time the street has been built. There have been specifications how a residential crossing should look like. And if it's younger, then usually the, ra the, the curbs are lowered. If it's older, usually often curbs are raised. So the idea would be, if you want to be fast, you want really to, to be to have a tagging such that you could just tag one node and it's clear what's the, what's up with the curbs there. And that suggests that we should have that. We don't have that yet. And um, I think I will get back on this on the blog, but there's enough work to do to to get the uh, sidewalks wor um, working anyway. So that's probably not the first point to address. And um, there are enough mixed crossings. So the next step would be to just beef up the crossing tagging. You could use the beef crossing tagging to an extent in this situation where you would use four nodes instead of one which is still much better than drawing a lot of things and um, having here a ton of nodes you have to place and mark properly and beef up the crossings uh, with, the, with the tag that would properly indicate um, what the curb status is. The trick why you couldn't just mark the crossing with the curb is the, the curb is a node on its own and it's not necessarily what we mean by a single crossing node so it would be at the moment it would be uh, mixing up things. So this is why you need as an extra tag on crossings to indicate whether the curbs um, are lowered or not. Okay, but uh, I've already said it's a little bit, uh, it's not the first thing to do because um, I don't know if you have an idea how much sidewalks are actually tagged in the world. Who would believe it's, uh, or just give me some numbers, what would you believe, uh, what is the relative proportion of sidewalks talked tagged on just highway residential? Who would say, yeah? 1%? Would go, 2%, okay. It's, um, it's somewhat realistic. I just made, uh, made a map um, with, uh, with tiles half a half a degree. It's just a very simple thing, no proper projection. Oh, it's a little bit, but you, you get the image. It's red if they are highway, or it's colored if they are highway residential at all. It's, it's red if it's close to 0% and it's uh, green if it's close to 100%. And you see there are some spots where quite a lot is tagged, but it's hard to find a place with really comprehensively tagged with sidewalks. So the real job is to get sidewalk tags on the, on the residential roads, also on the um, classified roads, but uh, for the residential, it's, it's obvious that's needed. So um, now we can get to the text that would be actually useful for um, for wheelchairs. The first thing I was told by by the city council is uh, actually the it's a thing I haven't thought of, but um, if you are a wheelchair user and to pass on a um, sidewalk, you also need to take into account the contra flow. So at the end. The norm assumes that if there is a width of at least um, 1.25 uh, meters, then it's uh, pretty safe that you can pass with the um, with a with a wheelchair. If it's closer, then it's uh, likely impossible and will get uh, difficult. The thing that we can go. Um, the, the simple thing that we can do is um, just make a course, very coarse mapping. I mean, if we know the interesting where uh, value is 1.25, it would be already useful if you have um, just the tagging with width is smaller than one meter 25, or we don't we don't need the information if it's 1.1 meter or 0 0.9 would be nice to have, but it's more interesting to have the width everywhere than to have a precise measurement. And um, there's also hope you can get a precise measurement. I've seen in another talk, this conference that apparently Speed Complete has a feature to, to measure things. Don't know whether that's quick enough. We'll have to check it out, whether it's quick enough to, to measure uh, sidewalks. And of course, the important thing is just uh, care for, this, um, for the tightest position. It's not relevant whether it's uh, wider somewhere else. And a problem that's basically unsolved in OSM there are a lot of places where once a week or whatever reason um, there are trash cans on the road. There are a lot of places where locals know that cars are parking on the on the sidewalk. And I don't think we have any solution here. Um, it's interfering with the idea of not mapping transitional things. 
but it would be of very practical use if you could have a tagging solution to warn people that on the day that uh, the trash is collected, it's impossible to pass there. But I have no solution with this. Another thing is incline. Um, I've just listed to basically to tell you that uh, here the exact number never matters because uh, there is no level like for the wheelchairs, uh, the no magic number here. Every use case has a different uh, acceptable incline. The bad news is you can't do it from a digital elevation model because the digital elevation models usually are horrible bad in urban canyons because they don't resolve uh, exactly enough under trees and in forests and in cutting the transform railway lines. Now, if you have a pleasant uh, footway, it's going through a park and uh, avoiding steepness by re repurposing a, a railway or former rail track line. And in the end, you have to get the last meters through an urban canyon. So congratulations. It's exactly zero of places of this. You could use a digital elevation model to properly estimate the, the incline. But the good thing is you can, with self-measuring, get uh, get credible numbers if you are patient enough, which is much worse for surface. That's, um, that's a little bit intricate because from um, if you are trying to get a nice rendering and they are probably happy to treat these both sides the same, but I had been uh, walking with a wheelchair user here, a sportive, uh, an athletic one, and he told me, this is, this is easily passable under all weather conditions. This is basically impassable and it's horribly dangerous when it rains. So for me, as a non-wheelchair user, it's, it's pretty similar, but in fact, it's horribly different. So um, surface is a tricky thing. Both, uh, sorry, both things would get the same tag in our current tagging approach. So the surface tag is of limited use currently. So our um, second try was for smoothness, but there is a similar problem. It's difficult to estimate it on the ground, but at least the semantics would allow to, to sort out uh, wheelchair issues um, with uh, using values for smoothness. So it's slightly better because you can uh, specify the value, but it's still difficult to measure it without just going there. Okay, so to sum up, Okay, pretty okay. To sum up, width and climb, surface and smoothness are important to get the uh, to get the routing right, but uh, definitely they are time consuming to do. And if we want to show something to the world, it's of use. Then we should just start to add a sidewalk attribute to add a sidewalk attribute on every highway um, for motor vehicles in the world. The residentials make the lion's share of this. Obviously, motorways uh, don't necessarily need this. You don't need a sidewalk, no, on the motorway. Probably not. But um, basically, if we have the effort to do it for residentials, we could probably do primary to tertiary along the way, and then probably we have a good, a good uh, routable grid for pedestrians, and then add the really interesting values, um, properties of the ways on top of that. Okay, thank you for listening. I would be even more pleased if you could uh, now go out, spread the meshes, and start uh, mapping sidewalks in your neighborhood. Thank you, Roland. That was um, really interesting. I think anytime you think you're done with your town or city, there's something new to do. And I think Roland gave an excellent example that is going to be very useful. Uh, I have one. I have one question on venueless so far, um, and I already see a couple hands raised in the audience. Um, so I'll start with this one. Um, the question is: What's the expectation on a residential street without sidewalks? Can v can wheelchairs and prams travel on the vehicle lanes? I'd say no. There are just so many examples for obstructions. It's uh, I don't have figures, but there are a lot of problems you probably don't uh, anticipate. So, um, if you can avoid, then avoid it. I think that's fair. I think it's a lot of regional differences, probably also. Um, oh, you want to? Uh, 
can you maybe go back to these tagging recommendations? Because uh, one thing that seems not the best idea. Okay, uh, what is exactly benefit of putting this uh, simple curb status on center node instead of all of, uh, on four uh, on four crossings? Because it just um, tapping uh, four times to mark uh, or eight times to mark these four statuses seems to be not horribly complicated and marking on the center node instead of on each crossing is going to be confusing, uh, result in double collection by various mappers and you have handle cases where and it's also harder to explain to mappers because when all four of them are have the same curb status then put on center, but when any of them is different then put on crossings, why not have uh, have uh, the version uh, on the right side to put uh, curb status on crossings instead on this central node uh, and mixing four statuses in one? Well, um, the idea was to make life easier um, if the if you pick, uh, if you figure out that 80% of the crossings or so are either all up or all down, then it's of, uh, then it's faster to take only one than uh, than all. If you figure out that 50% or so uh, are anyway mixed, then it's probably then for sure it's uh, it's faster to do one thing. I think if you have support in Street Complete and other easy tests, it's probably anyway faster to do that because uh, people would be fast enough. So uh, so it, it depends a little bit on the, um, on the editor side, um, whether we could immediately go to this and just beef up the crossings to get the tagging right, and avoid the confusion that the curb, the curb on separate ways uh, represents only the curb itself. You would have two objects on, on both ends, whilst here you would have only one object on the crossing itself because only a node represents the crossing. But um, we have to get this right, but then it's quite intuitively, and if the editor supports immediately that, it's probably the better way to go. And one thing, a very quick, a quick under advertisement. There was, uh, Tobias added a recently very nice feature in Street Complete to this sidewalk overlay. So it visualizes where sidewalks are tagged as either as tags or separate objects. So I really recommend it for sidewalk mapping. That's good to hear. Um, are you trying to include tactile paving in this scheme, or does that really need to be on separate ways? Uh, I'm sorry, would you mind to take down your mask? I haven't understood. Um, tactile paving, yeah. are you trying to map that in this scheme, or does that really need separate ways? Well, the, um, in total, we found three different issues. One might be a German problem that uh, it's simply not built to the specifications. You find all weird nonsense in uh, in the in the wild, and uh, then again, uh, things where I believe, as a non-disabled person, the tactile paving would be nonsense actually makes sense. The most impressive thing was uh, there was on a um, railway platform there was a signal, and the tactile paving immediately uh, sent the the people into the signal, and there was only uh, a fence around the signal. And I thought that's that's idiotic, by, but the people told me that uh, for the blind people. It's good to be sent along the landmark, and they would appreciate that they are sent along the signal, and it makes sense. So that's one thing. It's extremely difficult to uh, discern between uh, things that are just built up to wrong specifications and things that are, make sense. Then um, it's not clear which level of abstraction would make sense, because if you try to really uh, to map the, uh, every single line, it's a lot of work. And when I started to map the single lines, I even got pushback from people who don't didn't want this data and this detail. And uh, so these are the problems you have to coordinate with the local mapper community. You have to make sense of the uh, and yeah, yeah. You have to make sense of what you actually found on the ground to which level of detail you can and want map it. One more question, or it's rather a comment. Um, the, the picture to the um, bottom left, actually there's no new tag needed. It's already common practice to add the curb tag on the crossing 
highway crossing node. And there's actually a quest in Street Complete that asks for that. Cool, that's, uh, that's pretty cool to hear. I wasn't aware of that, sorry. And but... reg regarding the sidewalk overlay, at 14.30, we will have some birds of feather. We will meet outside and we can go around with Street Complete together and map a bit of Florence for one hour. Right. And try out that overlay, maybe. I have, a, I have a couple more from online. We have a couple more minutes, so I'm going to address those. Um, one question is, it sounds like there may be a role for data analysis and using well-mapped locations in specific countries, regions to identify defaults. Do you have any thoughts on that idea? Yeah, don't do it. <laughs> it's relatively simple. The problem, I can go back immediately to this point. No machine learning model in the world will catch these cases, and it's exactly the case that are breaking routing. It's uh, the valuable information comes from that is routing takes into account these irregular cases, and um, the state of mapping um, is that you have no trace of these things. Otherwise, you could already incur it into routing, and so no machine learning, no sane machine learning model would uh, would have a reason to assume that there is something special. So don't do it. Good. Um, that sounds like a, a, a good firm answer. Uh, so the, the, the other question was actually duplicate, but I want to finish with one question. So a lot of this information, you need to be on the ground to do it well. What is one thing that people from with armchair mapping can do to help with this? Well, it's, it's pretty possible to identify sidewalks within your local environment where you know how sidewalks look from aerial images. We have to figure out um, if you are trying it completely remote, you should sort out with the local community whether you do the right guessing. Sidewalks look, look very different around the world, so you should get in touch with people uh, whether you have the right idea of the areas. But in principle, it's possible to map uh, sidewalks, uh, sidewalks from areas. In particular, there had been a talk by Christopher Beddo, um, I think yesterday sometime. By uh, how he mapped a small city, and apparently he figured out a way to um, to guess geometry and then um, cross check by hand whether the geometry of the sidewalks is actually there. And he also even get around sidewalks under trees. So I haven't looked into details, this, but it might be promising that you really could from areas uh, wall, uh, map sidewalks. That's that's good news. At least we can do something uh, to help if we're not on the ground in a place. Um, thanks, Roland. That was fantastic. Um, Welcome. Kind of applause.